Diana J. Brody here from NLE Academy, and today a quick one. How you save your effects in Premiere versus how you save your effects in Avid. Let's be all about it. Okay, here we are on the Premiere side, and we are going to call up our effects bin. I have mine up already. If you don't have yours out by default, you can come up here to the window pulldown and choose effects and then it will come right out for you. And then when you look at your effects bin, you'll have a little folder that says presets. If you don't have this, it probably means you have not yet made a preset. So uh, it could be the case, uh, I have a lot of presets as you can see, uh, but it might be the case where if you don't see that, it's because you haven't made one. And when you make one, it will self-populate in, or it might just be there by default I can't right, rightly remember, but let's come up here to effects and I let's say I want to blur something uh, and I'm going to do a Gaussian blur right here. Let's do this. Let's come down here and grab out of blur and sharpen Gaussian blur and I'm going to throw it right there on this clip. Now I'm going to come over to my effect control tab and I'm going to go down to the Gaussian blur and let's say I just want to blur out uh, Einstein right there. I just want to blur that and uh, uh, we're going to come over here and we're going to uh, uh, go to blurriness and let's make it super blurry. Let's feather the edges of that blur like that. Love it. Let's reposition it slightly and then let's look at this. Uh, let's look at this blur. Oh, beautiful. Mwah, chef's kiss. Okay, so here we go. So now we've got our blur. Let's say I wanted to use that blur, the same blur, in a bunch of different places all throughout, all throughout my uh, program. Uh, I would then come over here to the Gaussian blur right here in the effect control panel, and I would right click on it, right click on it, and go to save preset. And then I can name that preset, which I will. I'll name it a uh, blur sign. Uh, blur sign. Let's just call it blur sign and say OK. Now, when I go to my presets, let me clear my search. When I go to my presets, there it is. Blur sign. Blur sign. Now, I already have a Gaussian blur saved. Uh, that's a, a blur that I use for when I put vertical video over top of itself, then I put a blur on the bottom layer, right, to do that. Uh, I have saved out the exact blur that I want for that particular thing. But here's the blur sign, so I know that it's going to be exactly this blur, and I can go ahead and let's say right here, I can go ahead and say blur sign, I'm going to pull that down. Now that's blurry there. I go into my effect controls and I can uh, click on blur and, and I should be able to adjust that blur mask. There it is. And so I click on, here I am on blur, click on mask. Sorry about that. Then I can come over here and let's say this is what I wanted to blur out. I can adjust it and I am not affecting, I'm not affecting this initial blur. This initial blur, if I come back, uh, if I come back over, let's say, if I come over here to, uh, let me get rid of this. If I come over here to this long shot of Philly, I put this back here, it's going to still be a blur in the same place as before. If I click mask, you can see it's in the same place as it was here. So me adjusting it here and moving it to the side does not affect the, the preset. That preset will stay. What a really good use of presets, right, is like I've got this Lumetri preset made, uh, black and white, high contrast, and then I can pull this down and now it's turned that black and white. Probably better visual if we do it to here. And you can see it's turned that black and white. Uh, and so uh, that's how you save things out. So if I come, if I go over here and let's say Lumetri color, I hate going over here and having to drag Lumetri color, uh, having to search for it and then drag it out every time. So let's say I drag it out here and I put the Lumetri color here before I even save it. Let me get rid of this blur. 
before I even save this, before I even adjust it whatsoever, I can come over to Lumetri Color right here and right click on it and say save preset and call it Lumetri Color no change, right? Hit okay. And then uh, I've already got this particular one saved. And then I come over here, Lumetri Color, no change. So now instead of having to come up here, search for Lumetri Color or go to the Lumetri presets and search for it or go to the video effects and search for it, I've got it saved in the preset with no change whatsoever. I've got crop no change so that I don't have to go searching for crop every time. So I just took a crop from out here, put it on the face of the clip, came over to the crop, right clicked and saved preset before I even altered anything so that I don't have to keep going back and doing a search. So that's another way to use it, right? You can, you can have, I have a morph cut. I use that so that morph cut is goes uh, as a transition, will go between two clips, right? So you can even take these, if I click on that, come up here to the morph cut uh, and to where it says morph cut right here and go right click, save preset. So you can even do that with a transition and save it out into your, into your transitions. And it's super, super handy, but it works slightly differently on Avid, which should come as no surprise to anyone. So join me on the other side. Okay, here we are on the Avid side. And really quickly, if you wanna know what I think the must know settings are for Avid, you can grab my free PDF. I've left the link down in the description. You're gonna wanna know these. These are gonna set you up for success. Be curious, grab that free PDF. Okay, now for the Avid side, here we go. We're gonna make ourselves a new bin. You're gonna make a new bin by right clicking and saying new bin. And then we're gonna say, a uh, whoops, effects, effects bin right there. And uh, I didn't mean to put that in scripts. So let's bring that out. Uh, and so let's double click this bin right here. So here's our effects bin uh, and it's blank. There's nothing in it right now, uh, but uh, we are gonna put stuff in it. So uh, really quickly, we are going to go to our effect palette, which I already have tabbed in the side right here. Normally all of my bins are on the left-hand monitor, right? But because I want you guys to see what I'm doing, they're here with me right now, but you do you, you organize your stuff the way you want. And so we're gonna go up to window, I'm sorry, tools. And we're gonna go down to the effects palette, the effects palette. So mine's already tabbed in here, but you can call yours up that way. And let's say for the sake of argument, uh, we want to, uh, we want to may, uh, do a color effect onto this clown. And why wouldn't you? Of course you want to put a color effect on that clown. So let's go over here to image and let's just take a, a bare bones color effect and put it down there. Now we're going to call up our effect editor, uh, right here. And in the effect editor, we're going to adjust some stuff. First of all, you know we're gonna wanna solarize it. That's much better, just right off the top. Let's posterize it, because why not? Let's bring in the reds. Let's bring down the blues. Oh, that's perfect. That looks like nuclear summer, and I love it. So uh, here we go. So now we've got that affected. We want to repeat this effect on every time we see a still. We want it to look just like this, because why wouldn't we? It's awesome. So unlike in Premiere, you cannot copy and paste attributes from clip to clip, right? So I can't just take the attributes from one clip and put it on another. So uh, in Premiere, we were saving out our effects so that they would be a preset so that we could use that same effect again later if we wanted to, but we could also copy and paste stuff as well in Premiere. So if we had that effect on one, we could copy and paste it onto other clips. Not so in Avid, you cannot do that in Avid. So let's say right here on Hong Kong, let me go ahead and remove that effect on Hong Kong, just so we've got something nice and clean for you guys to look at. So if I wanna save the, this effect to reapply it on Hong Kong, I would open up my effects editor and I'm gonna pull my effect editor. Uh, we'll put it over here just so you can see. So here's the effect. 
you see that it's on that effect. Here's the color effect right there with everything on it. And I'm just literally gonna drag it out of the effect editor and put it there in the bin. I could also rename it, right? I could call this a uh, nuclear summer color effect, right? And then uh, we could move out Let's get that little guy out of the way. We can move that out of the way. You can see that right there, nuclear summer color effect. Then I could drag it out of here and I could just apply it right there. And so what I will do is I will have a bin of effects that I've created. Let's create another one just so you can see. So let's go ahead and let's grab, let's go back to our good old friend 3D Warp and I'm gonna hold down option and option drop it on top because you have to hold down option or alt to nest your effects, right? Then I'm gonna go back into my effect editor and uh, and let's move this off to the side just for a second. And I'm gonna go and I'm gonna upscale everything. Oh, I love it. So let's say we wanted that to carry across and we can have, you know, we could keyframe it, right? We could put a keyframe here and a keyframe here and then, you know, and then back it back out, right? So now we've got these two keyframes on that effect and and we're like we want every single still to move the same way so i'm going to go back into my effect editor here and uh let me move this to this side now and i'm going to take 3d warp and i'm going to whoops i'm going to find my bin where's my effects bin here's my effects bin right here nuclear summer and i'm going to take this 3d warp and i'm going to say you know pull, well, I usually do it this way, P out, uh, P out, um, uh, fast. There we go. So for a pull out fast, I feel like, uh, not writing a U L L for pull out, uh, does, uh, uh, give me, a uh, uh, it saves some time. So, and I get that time back at the end of my life. They give that back to you right after you die. They say, how many, how many characters did you cut out of your word? Let's give that back to you. You can have those 30 seconds back for just for a second. So here we go. Uh, now I've got this. It retains all of this. Ah, that's beautiful. It retains all of that. Now let's apply it to Hong Kong. I'm going to hold down option, drop it there. And then there's Hong Kong, right? And if we double click on here, we can see here are our nested effects, right? Here's the, this is the 3D warp with the pullout. That's the nuclear summer right there. So that you can see that that's right there. Beautiful. So I will have, uh, I will have a, an effects bin where I will make effects. And you can do that, right? If I like this dissolve right here, uh, didn't mean to go into that. If I go, like this dissolve right here as well, I can go... I can hit the wrong button. I can go back into my effects editor and it's on that dissolve. Here's this dissolve. And I can say, you know, dissolve minus 23 or whatever. You know, if I put minus means signals to me that it's ending at cut. Uh, if I just did 23, it would be starting at cut. And if I want if it was centered on cut, I'd call it C23 for centered on cut. But here we go. So, right, we've got that. It's And now I want the Hello Kitty to dissolve the same way. I know, I, normally I don't save out. Uh, I, I don't normally save out my uh, dissolves because they're quite easy to make otherwise. But just so you guys can see uh, that you can also do it with transitions, right? Doesn't matter. We'll work on any effect in the effect palette. Pull it out, put it in here you're good to go and you can just use them anywhere, right? One of the things I wanted to show you super quick because we're almost done here is right up here at the effect palette. Notice that in my effect palette, when I come down here, effects bin. Anywhere you save out your effects, they will, it will show up in your, so if I can't, I'm like, where did I put that effects bin? Buried in a folder somewhere, maybe. I can come over here to the effects palette, click on effects bin, and it will show me my saved effects right here. So just like your presets in Premiere, it will show you your presets in your effects bin in the effect palette all the way at the bottom. It will show you 
any bin you've saved an effect out of. So I don't like to have like 17 bins with like one effect here, one effect there, whatever. I'm very tidy about it. I make an effects bin. I put all my saved effects in that effects bin. That includes titles too. You can make a title, save the title into there. So anytime, anything I will put into that, eh, maybe, maybe I'll have titles in their own bin called titles. That seems like more like me, doesn't it? I'm, I'm that kind of person. But so here you go. We've got all of our effects right here. We can save them out. It's great. This is how you do it. You can save out all your own presets. I love it. You can even, just like we did in uh, Premiere, right? Let me just show you. Let's go back to image. Let me grab out color effect. If I didn't want to have to keep finding color effect and I wanted to just save the color effect without, uh, without altering it so that it's easier to find, where did I put, there it is, my effects bin, I can then come in here to my effects palette and then just grab that color effect and say color effect, no change. Now I've got that color effect and I can put this color effect with no change on the sunflower, then I can come back to my, and then I don't have to, so if I always have my effects been up, so now there it is with no change, and now I don't have to go back looking for it in the effects palette because I have it in my own effects bin, it's easier to find, and now I can say, oh yeah, this is better, that's much better, uh, I love it already, and then I can save that effect out and call it color effect, green nuke summer and now I've got that one and I can apply that one anywhere I want right and so I've got that saved out but it doesn't it doesn't alter this effect no change that will still be no change on the color effect and I can apply it anywhere that's how you do that in avid I hope you liked it as much as I like bringing it to you I'm gonna call this one a tie I prefer Avid just slightly because I really do like the workflow of having it in the, in the bin all by itself, but it works just as well in Premiere, and I think this one is 50-50. You let me know what you think down in the comments. Hey, if you're finally ready to master Avid and double your job and income opportunities, I've got a class for that. Click the link below in the description and use the coupon code YouTube24 to get 15% off on this course. Let's demystify Avid together.